Good morning, it's day 13. We are waking up in the Summit Inn in Snoqualmie Pass. So it's a very tiny little village um, across from a ski resort that is one of the, I think, uh, primary places for Seattle skiers to go. So anyways, this is the basic anatomy of a resupply. So we picked up a box which we sent to the inn. Um, what you want to do is break it down in different categories. So let's get started. The basics here, this is the dinner setup. So our next stretch is about 100 miles. So we need approximately four nights worth of dinners. Assuming we're gonna do around 25 miles per day. So four dinners, and some potatoes, ramen with added protein in the form of tuna or chicken. Um, we had some snacks along the way, some uh, simple sugars in the form of candy just to give you an uh, energy boost when needed, some protein in the form of beef jerky for repair and recovery, and then throughout the day while walking for energy and everything else um, we try to sustain ourselves with some bars so we typically will eat like four bars or so throughout the day while hiking we'll snack on other things too when we take occasional stops for this one we have some peanut butter pretzels i'll snack on trail mix almost all day long in the morning we eat a couple pop tarts typically maybe a bar first thing in the morning as well and then some more high carb high calorie food in the form of cookies so that should do it for four days. Here we go. It's August 1st. We're leaving Snoqualmie Pass around noon. Uh, we're carrying food for about a nearly 100 mile food carry to uh, White Pass. Getting a late start. Let's see how many miles we can get in today. See you later, Snoqualmie. So just ran into northbound hiker who I asked about the possibility of this fire up ahead. Ooh, almost tripped. And uh, he said that actually he had heard about a fire near Chinook Pass yesterday, but he said he was relatively puny, only like a half acre and he heard that they got it out. So, fingers crossed. Pleasant trail this morning, blanketed in wildflowers. Barely legible, but we're entering National Forest land. Interesting. Good morning, it's August 2nd, about 5.30 a.m. Um, Evan and I got a good good rise this morning. Started walking as the sun was coming up. This morning's wake up call is the sound of power lines. You can see one above my head here. Um, we've been so isolated in Washington so far and it's really been true wilderness that <laughs> yesterday and thus far today seem kind of out of sorts and odd. Um, it's not that we're walking through developments or anything, but even seeing something like power lines um, makes me feel like we're on the Appalachian Trail again. So, um, otherwise, we did about 18 out of town last night. Um, didn't really do an evening report. We camped right off the side of a small dirt road um, where we actually had a little bit of reception so we could kind of get things in line with emails and whatnot. 
Um, this morning we're planning a little over 28 to a hunting cabin. It's maintained by a snowmobile club actually. And um, they leave it open for the hikers. Occasionally there's trail magic there. So that'd be a nice surprise. But otherwise, it's kind of right in the range we're shooting for. And it'll be nice to not have to set up tents. Always cool to see uh, morning undercasts, even if there's power lines in the way. Here's a plaque I think put up by an Eagle Scout just to warn against the dangers of fires. Apparently 3,000 acres burned here in 1988. These little spring beds are always such nice pretty little places in the woods. And this one's especially nice because it's surrounded by burnt trees, so it's a welcome, cheery little sight. It's been mostly just pretty pleasant trail walking through woods today, but really got a nice view here that we earned after a big climb. What's neat about this section of trail is that I've seen some hoof prints and <clears throat> I don't know, someone might have a horse out here, but I also know that um, there are elk in this area. So it'd be very cool to see some elk at some point. I've read on our guide that um, some people have had some elk encounters at a few of the campsites along the way. We're on about a 10 mile stretch here without any water. Um, carrying about two liters, but fortunately it's not too terribly hot today. It looks like some kind souls did leave some water at some point for the hikers, but these are all empty currently. So we'll just have to keep hiking. We have less than five miles to water now. Lots of logging activity in this area. Certainly not the pristine wilderness that has passed through so far in Washington. There's just a hell of stump. Here's a cool piece of history about this meadow. In case you can't read it, in the fall of 1853, the people of the Longmire Wagon Train spent two days in this meadow resting and preparing for their descent down the west side in the Puget Sound area. Very, very beautiful meadow area. A little bit further along is uh, the cabin that we might be staying at tonight. It's maintained by a snowmobile club and open for use by everyone. Here's the uh, Government Meadows cabin, also called the Mike Ulrich cabin. I guess, uh, I don't know what his history is, but there's a little plaque or memento to him here, which kind of like warns people to take care of this place, um, or else you might uh, disturb the ire of this Mike Ur character. But pretty cool looking place, right on the edge of a big, beautiful meadow. Apparently, this is a popular place with snowmobilers, so we might stay here tonight. Good morning, it's August 3rd. Um, it's actually day 15 on trail. Kind of crazy. We've been out here two weeks officially. Um, we stayed in the cabin that I showed you yesterday um, overnight. There's a loft up top. Slept up there. Didn't have to break down um, camp. Didn't have to worry about any condensation in our tents. Um, we're shooting for around 30 today. I don't know that Evan and I will finish in the same place today. What the plan is for us both, both to meet up in uh, town of White Pass tomorrow. After about 10 miles without water, I just got to this beautiful little meadow and campsite here. 
with a great little spring with ice cold water. Very, very happy. It's not as hot today, but it's still really nice to have cold water and I was starting to get a little thirsty. It's a bit of a luxury out here. The spring's actually piped and really easy to collect from. Hi, buddy. A little chipmunk hiding from me. So the fire area we walked through yesterday was an area in recovery from a fire that had happened many years ago. I think five plus or maybe even like 10 plus years ago. There are only like a few standing dead trees left. The understory was thickly vegetated. This fire, I believe, was only a year or two ago. So you can kind of see different stages of recovery after a forest fire. Here, you know, all the trees are dead, but most of them are still standing. Um, <clears throat> so there's a little bit more of a, even more of a ghostly feeling here with so many standing dead trees. It wouldn't be a safe place to camp. Um, so I know that upcoming in Oregon, there's many burn areas. And it's not recommended that you camp there because of all the standing dead trees. So we'll see. I'm sure we're gonna see more of this. It's sad because as you say, the majority of these forest fires are started by some sort of human accident. yet view of Mount Rainier. It's an awesome perspective of Crystal Mountain Ski Resort, which sits just, I guess, beside and below Mount Rainier. But it's really cool to see all the trails cut out from here. It's a really great perspective, almost like looking at a ski map. And you can see, I don't know if um, you can see there's a lodge pretty far up towards the ridge line, and then there's some bowls up top. And I don't know, I imagine those bowls are inbounds. I don't know if there's any lifts going up to them, but I bet you can walk up to the top and ski those, which is pretty awesome. So this bridge marks the boundary of Mount Rainier National Park. So this will be the second national park of this hike. This is a beautiful spot on Dewey Lake. Almost has like a little sandy beach shore to it here. Kinda wish I was staying here, but I have a little bit further to go for today. We'll take a little rest here, probably and soak my feet though. ridge tonight where I had planned to camp and the campsite was pretty exposed and just a couple little clumps of trees um, a couple standing dead trees 
So I decided I'd be a little bit more comfortable going on to a little bit more um, secluded campsite. It's a little bit more wind protected. So going about two miles further, uh, camping right by a creek. It'll leave a shorter day for tomorrow. Um, this will end up being a big day. Though. I'm not exactly sure how many miles yet until I get to camp, but somewhere around 36 or 37, which is going on the biggest day. I never hiked, I think I did 39, one day on the AT, so yeah, kind of surprised to be doing it this early in the hike, but happy about it. Good morning, it's Thursday, August 4th. This is the first foggy day that I've woken up to. I'm hoping that doesn't mean rain, um, we'll see if there's a slight chance in the forecast. Um, but the good thing is, plan on getting to town today. Excuse me, I did about 36.2 yesterday. So a few more miles than expected, which leaves 16 today. Um, got to camp by a really nice, pleasant um, father-daughter combo. We were out hiking last night. Um, the father's 72 years old. He's been doing backpacking trips all his life with his family and he used to lead trips for a local kind of like scouting group and take you know young young boys and girls and I think around like teenage uh teenage years out on these trips so it was really cool to talk to him and her about all their stories um so it was a nice night in camp I was told that this meadow it's frequently a place where you can see um, a herd of elk grazing, but this foggy, cold, dreary weather must have them some dues as well. Just had a very nice couple from Austria give me some fresh blueberries that they picked while they were off trail. They're going north down, so let's put a little bit of an extra hop in my step as I'm getting closer to white pass. This is something I forgot to mention uh, in talking with the uh, father and daughter last night. They both live in Washington, know a good bit about the area, and I was under the impression while I'm walking through the Northern Cascades and the Glacier Peak Wilderness, which are kind of the northernmost parts of Washington, that the only bear in that area are black bear. Now, he said that most of the locals know this, but there's actually a population of about 30 to 50 grizzly bears who have migrated into the area of Northern Cascades and Glacier Peak Wilderness. So, I would have been quite shocked to see a grizzly bear. So just ran into my own little piece of trail magic here, you could say. A little bit of serendipity so i don't actually remember if i included this in the video or not but back in the very first portion of the hike coming from the border back to hearts pass i strapped my socks to the top of my pack to dry because they were wet um usually works really well and i lost one of them right so i started a one sock rotation so I was, i've been wearing like random not today but mismatched socks it's only have three darn tough socks now which are my preferred hiking sock so i'm walking along the trail and i see these guys laying there nothing else around them so yes these are someone else's dirty crusty used socks however they are darn tough and they do have small little holes in them nothing too significant but the reason that one of the reasons I even wear darn tough is that they have a lifetime guarantee, and if you put a hole in them, they will replace them for free. So I've been buying lots of darn tough socks over the years, um, in hopes that eventually I will have my own sustainable replenishing source of socks without having to buy anymore. So I was very disappointed, of course, you can imagine, when I lost one, thereby kind of negating that whole warranty thing with that pair at least so even if these are gross this to me 
is a perfectly suitable replacement. Limited rock hopping available here, it looks like, to keep the feet dry, but nature seems to provide its natural bridges when none are around. So let's go poke our way up this thing. Don't even have a nice grip. Praise the Lord, I've needed this for the last couple of miles. Got my resupply box, new uh, socks, eating some uh, awesome chicken and pita meat for out here, and then uh, start the resupply. No one else doing stuff around. get a shower I thought I would document uh, how dirty your legs and feet can get after uh, four to five days without a shower. I just want to document Evan's feet after he got a shower. Like what the heck's going on here? <laughs> a little far away but we're here in town Packwood. You can see there's just some uh, elk casually strolling across Main Street. <laughs> 